All right. Hello. Hello, everyone. Uh, welcome to the Master of Urban Planning Program breakout room. I'm Dee Kawi. I'm the Deputy Director of the Master of Urban Planning Program here in NUS. And I'm expecting um, an alumnus of the program, Mr. Dev Devansh Jain, to join us. So um, once he's arrived, I'll introduce him to everybody. So we are the last session for the day, and what we we'll, what I'll do is to I'll, I'll give a short about fifteen minute um, kind of introduction to the program here at NUS. Uh, Mr. Jain uh, will then say something about his experience um, going through the program. He graduated in two thousand fifteen and is now working at Acom, uh, one of the large, uh, a very large American based multinational company that does urban planning, infrastructure planning, design, basically the entire package um, in various parts of the world. So um, we have about, about 10 people in this room. Um, so let me share my screen. Ah, okay. So I just saw uh, Mr. Devansh Jain joining us. Devansh, when you're ready, would you, be, would you like to maybe introduce yourself to the group? Hi, um, am I audible? Yes, you are. Okay, great. Um, so, um, hi everyone. I'm Devansh. Um, I was an US graduate from Master of Urban Planning course. Uh, that was the first cohort um, back in 2015. And yeah, um, after spending almost nine years in Singapore, uh, it was early this month that I moved to Dubai actually and joined as a uh, senior urban planner at Picom. It's a US-based company thing. Um, so yeah, I'm happy to be here, invited by um, Professor Lee Kavi, and uh, looking forward to the discussion and some of answering, helping you with some of the questions. Thanks. Thanks, Devansh. So that's what we're here to do. We're here to introduce the program and hopefully you know, answer your questions and help you make the decision. You know about um, entering your graduate education and the kind of career that you plan for yourself in the future. So, um, like I said, I'm going to share my screen. Okay, um, can you guys see my slides? The bunch. Can you see the slides? Yeah. Okay. All right. So, um, so I mean, if you're you know, if you're interested in urban planning and you're looking at urban planning schools around the world, you realize that um, there are of course, many urban planning programs, but they're really also quite different. And it's partly because urban planning is a really diverse um, and broad-based kind of profession, right? So I see what I've done here is to list some of the, I suppose, on a key professional expertise and components of urban planning. So in certain schools, there's, a, there's an emphasis on strategic and physical planning. Uh, certain schools focus on public policy or development and real estate. Uh, certain schools, especially in the States um, and in certain parts of UK as well, um, they have a strong emphasis on community planning. So we're talking about very small scale um, community led type of planning practices. And then there's a, a kind of a whole range of specializations from big data, data science, uh, infrastructure, transport, poverty, social issues, so on and so forth. So if you're in Singapore, I mean, recently Singapore, the the Urban Redevelopment Authority of Singapore just released the long-term review plan and is inviting uh, members of the public to go look at the plan. And this is a very classic kind of uh, a Singapore model of planning, what we often call long-term planning. And long-term planning covers uh, pretty much uh, a, a lot of um, these different dimensions of planning. It is for, for, for sure a kind of strategic and physical planning. Uh, it deals with public policy. It is interested in maximizing or at least balancing the, need, the, the, the needs of different users of land and maximizing the value of land. And it entails, I suppose, uh, look, thinking about planning in terms of um, using big data to help make decisions, thinking about infrastructure and mobility, uh, thinking about the social needs of the population or different groups of people. And once we, once we move uh, downscale, um, there's also a certain dimension of, of community lab involvement. So it's, in NUS, in the urban planning program here at NUS, um, we are, pre, um, I would say that we are a physical planning focused program. 
It is a two-year full-time program. And we are, because it's positioned in Singapore, we are interested in using Singapore as a laboratory of key planning trends and ideas. Singapore is, in a, in a sense, quite unique, but it is also, in a sense, a kind of a focal point for a lot of trends and ideas that are happening around the world. So at the, at the same time that the planning program looks at issues that are pertinent to Singapore's planning needs, uh, it, the issues are also very relevant to um, other places that are undergoing um, rapid pace urbanization, high density living environments, sustainability issues, uh, so on and so forth. Now as a physical planning program, uh, or at least one that focuses on physical planning, um, the, the MUP is pretty much anchored around studios. Uh, for those of us who have been through a design architectural training, or certain kinds of urban planning training um, in your undergraduate degrees, you will probably be quite familiar with what uh, studios are about as a form of a, a teaching space, teaching and learning space. Um, so in basically in every studio groups, uh, students are broken down into groups and are given a kind of project brief wherein they are tasked to come up with certain kinds of planning solutions they're tasked to meet certain kinds of criteria and to, to deal with, uh, they're given a site, they have to study the site and um, then propose certain kinds of schemes um, that deals with um, certain kinds of planning visions. So across, uh, I'll, I'll, I'll show a glimpse of the curriculum later. I won't go into detail about the curriculum because it's very time, but I'll show it. I'll show a glimpse of the curriculum later that, that demonstrates how the studio anchors um, in many ways the entire um, learning experience in the MUP program. Now, across the two years, there will be four major studios. And what we're trying to do is what, what I'll call a vertical integration of the entire process of physical urban planning. That is from the large scale visioning exercise, thinking about what the city can be in the future, to the kind of a detailed site analysis of a particular location and a local community to all the way down to um, looking at urban design at a kind of a neighborhood scale. So uh, connecting, I suppose, different scalar um, dimensions of urban planning um, is, what I, is, is what I mean when I say there's a vertical integration. So when you go through the two years of education here in the MUP program, what you're led through is this more or less holistic approach to thinking about urban planning um, across different scales. Now we understand that um, we, we accept students from different backgrounds. Um, most, some of them might not have a, a training in uh, architectural urban planning or physical planning or land management. Some of them might not be proficient in the kinds of softwares that we use as physical planners. And therefore what we do is in the first year, especially we, we provide very hands-on training um, to, to sort of raise everybody's technical skills so that we can all participate fully in the studio environment. Now, besides the studio, um, the curriculum also allows for students to sort of tailor their, uh, their learning experience. Um, there are spaces and, uh, for students to choose electives. And one good thing about being situated in the National University of Singapore is that um, as a, as a, as a, once you're enrolled in the MEV program, you can choose electives from any of the departments across um, all faculties in NUS, right? So there's a very large basket of um, electives you can choose from. Um, it doesn't mean, of course, I mean, that I won't go into details about the, the specific of choosing electives. There is a certain degree of com competition, and so you do not always get the elective you want but the, select, the, the, the choices you have are very big, which also means that you have a range, you have that degree of flexibility to sort of choose a specialization, to pursue certain issues which you think are not dealt with fully or at a level of detail that you want, and you can pursue those um, using your elective slots. In the MUP program, we are quite selective about the kinds of teaching staff we have, and we try to, um, we, we choose, uh, the teaching staff uh, come from different um, backgrounds. Um, they're practiced in different parts of the world. 
Um, they all have many years of teaching, research, and practice experience. Um, so in a sense, within the study environment, within your core modules and electives, um, you're exposed to respected members of the profession and um, in a sense, teachers who are really at the forefront of the, the, the topics and issues that they're dealing with. I mentioned earlier that we, uh, we try to accept students from diverse educational backgrounds because we feel that um, in the professional urban planning, um, it is precisely this, this, this diversity of expertise that is often necessary in any planning project, any planning team. Um, so we, we have chosen students from, I mean, of course, we, we the students from architecture, urban management, land management, real estate, um, it, and geography tend to form the bulk, but we also accept students from um, economics, engineering, the liberal arts, and law, right? So we are not that much interested. We're not fixed on what is your educational background, but we are much more interested in why you want, to, why you wish to pursue urban planning and what kind of career you wish to forge for yourself um, in the future. So this is a glimpse of the, um, of the um, curriculum. And so it's, if we follow, it's, uh, we're looking at two years, so that's four semesters. And what I want to show is basically um, the studio in each semester. Um, and then the core modules in each semester and the parts that are not highlighted are um, either electives or these sort are of optional things that you can uh, take on or choose um, or switch between electives and, and for example, dissertations. And so forth. so that the, unblack, the unmarked spaces are, I suppose, the space of flexibility for you to tailor your education. Um, I'll quickly go through some samples of what we do in studio and our core modules. So in the studio environment, um, this is one project that students uh, did. Um, uh, if you're a Singaporean, uh, you'll be very familiar with the Pa Leva Air Base project. So the, the, the airport is basically being uh, shifted somewhere else. And now there is uh, kind of an opportunity to rethink and replan this large plot of, of land. Um, so the students were engaged in re sort of doing a master plan for the future of Pa Leva Air Base. So what you can see here is a kind of a schematic land use plan um, that also deals with the road network systems, uh, the zoning of land uses, the integration of, of uh, living, working, residential, commercial, industrial spaces, and also recreational green spaces. Uh, so we're looking at land use plan on the left and then on the right, the students um, at the end of the project also go down to the detail of urban design where they look at the scale of the neighborhood to look uh, to sort of craft these kinds of uh, conducive living environments, right? Um, so that, that's just an example of the studio. We are also very interested in the softer aspects um, of, of urban planning, that is thinking about how urban planning and urban planning decisions um, impact society, right? The lives of people, right? So it's not just about drawing this land use zoning plans and sort of looking at things um, from a kind of a, a elevation, but looking very closely from the ground up to understand how people experience certain um, uh, city spaces, how people are affected by planning decisions. So what I'm trying to show here um, is, you know, we, we try to be very topical in a sense that, you know, our the, the kinds of issues we deal in with are very often uh, directly connected to what's happening at the moment. So this is just one focus group that was organized across different cities, right? So we have one city, one group that uh, in China talking about how pandemic affected urban life in China. We have one group in Singapore talking about how uh, the pandemic uh, affected urban life in Singapore and so on and so forth. So these are uh, focus groups where the students invited um, other students, their relatives, their friends to participate. And so we sort of try to gather data and information about the lived experience of uh, the pandemic. And again, a kind of a mapping exercise that looks at uh, the city from the user perspective. And of course, you know, uh, increasingly big data and technology uh, is, is playing a uh, in, uh, fundamental role in planning and planning decisions. So uh, one of the modules, which we call planning technologies, um, is interested in harnessing um, the value of big data and helping us understand 
uh, what is happening in cities and how we can change the cities for specific purposes. So this is one example in which um, the students uh, guided by the professor used two sets of data, one set of data from the Land Transport Authority and another set of data from the Statistics Department uh, to understand how um, public transport ridership is changing you know, once uh, these kinds of lockdown effects are being lifted, right? So the recovery of ridership, how patterns are changing um, from pandemic to post-pandemic uh, urban life. So besides the core modules, the studio and the electives, um, we also offer a series of um, programs uh, in NUP, which we feel are very helpful in training pro uh, students and also preparing them for a career in um, in the diverse field of urban planning. So one, uh, one thing we offer is the opportunity to take up internships, right? So it's a, you have opportunity to spend your modular credits to, to take up a full-time um, two or three month uh, internship. Um, it is optional. Uh, you do have to source the internship yourself. We do provide certain kinds of support, but it is, uh, it is uh, one thing we offer to the students and the students often find it very helpful because it's sort of their fir a first step into, into finding a, a sort of crafting a career for themselves, their first step into the profession, understanding how the profession works, understanding what offices are looking for, employees, so on and so forth. So this, the companies that have accepted our interns there's a broad range of them coming from both the public and private sectors and also the NGOs. We also have an exchange program which has been suspended uh, due to COVID and we hope to reinstate that in the future. Uh, maybe next year or next next year, we do not know. So I'm not gonna take, talk too much about it. Um, we also organize an annual field trip because we like students to learn from country, cities or the region um, and and so far, we have visited Tokyo, Sydney, and Taiwan. Again, um, this was suspended, but I think this year we are reinstating the end of the future. And finally, um, we are quite serious about guiding our students um, into their career paths. Um, so we do quite a bit of industry networking. So a lot of the tutors uh, involved in teaching are also practitioners. Uh, we invite practitioners to attend the studio meetings, attend our classes. Uh, so that they know our students and our students get to interact with them. We organize an annual uh, Planning Futures event, which is an event where the students uh, get to network with um, various members of the industry. And we also have a, at the university level, there is also a Center for Future Ready Graduates, which helps students uh, prepare for graduation. And this event is basically co-organized with the Center for Future Ready Graduates. Now the fee for the MUP program is $88,000 um, for two years. Um, what we do is that uh, we have a, a number of grants and scholarships that subsidize tuition fees. Um, the, these, these forms of financial support are merit-based. That means we try to, uh, we will allocate um, these grants and scholarships to um, students based on um, how good they are in terms of their results, in terms of um, their aptitude for urban planning, and in terms of the quality of, this, of, of, of their thinking, right? And um, the number of, um, the amount of grants and scholarships that we have, um, generally, we'll probably be, we'll be able to support four or more students every cohort, right? Um, they will receive some degree of grants and scholarships. Um, so at this point in time, um, we are juggling with a number, but I think we, we can support four or more students, um, depending on whether we, we provide partial or full uh, funding. Um, grants and scholarships are considered during the application process, right? So when we look at the applications coming in, uh, we will also make the same make the decision at that point in time to decide uh, whom to offer grants and scholarships. Now, where do our graduates work? Um, again, you know, it's, it's a kind of a continuation of where um, our interns work. Um, so there's a broad spectrum of those who work in public agencies in Singapore, private sector, tertiary research, um, NGOs, non-government organizations, 
and a number of them have also chosen to pursue a further education in PhDs. So at this point in time, I'd like to pass um, the mic to um, Devanj, uh, who will say something about his own um, experience going through the program, graduating and finding work in Singapore, and now, I suppose, moving on to Dubai. Right. Devanj, please. Great recap uh, about MUP. It's been quite some time um, since I graduated. Um, so all in all, I mean, program has been um, very good. I feel given that we were the first batch, of course, there were a few hiccups in between uh, in trying to understand uh, the, the whole functioning as well of the SDE. Um, but the good part is I think um, you get to actually attend um, uh, modules from other schools as well. Uh, that is something I really appreciate. Um, and given depending on where you want to place yourself in the future, you can either go for uh, modules from the LKY School of Public Policy or design related ones or policy related. Someone is interested in transport, then you can actually go for transport planning module. So, I mean, uh, depends uh, what your interest is, uh, depending on how you uh, want to proceed in terms of your future career. Um, there's a lot of scope. Um, in terms of uh, prospects after you graduate, uh, I feel um, I would put it into three sectors. Uh, of course, Lika, we just now showed you um, where all you can land yourself, but I would put it up into private, public, and then research. Um, so, I mean, public sector, mostly Singapore based, I would talk about um, given like agencies like HDB, which is a housing development board, URA or LTA. Um, so this uh, work would mostly focus on the uh, work that is being done in Singapore. But of course, if you are going overseas um, back again to your home country or any other place in the world, um, this is what the, the uh, city specific work where you are located would be doing. Uh, in terms of the private sector, of course, there are much more opportunities because you get the chance to actually work on um, projects projects uh, all across the globe. So just giving an example, like I worked in um, consulting uh, at Sabana Jurong for five years. Um, it was really different uh, in terms of the projects that we got, uh, some in Africa, some in Southeast Asia. Um, given that uh, Sabana Jurong is actually uh, based out of Singapore, so that's why you have that luxury to have that kind of experience. Whereas if you might be working in some other companies like uh, ACOM or CPG, depending on, on their project and uh, outreach, uh, you primarily would be focusing on Southeast Asia. Um, and the third stream is about the research stream, uh, which is more or less uh, if you want to pursue a PhD after this or another master's, I don't know. A lot of people actually are doing these days. Um, I have had a few of my friends as well doing it. So moving into data science or uh, doing some kind of MBA um, as also I've seen people doing it. Um, so depending on your interests, but then um, Let's let's uh, keep in mind that uh, research is primarily, I've seen mostly if you want to pursue a PhD is something and the person would end up doing it. So depends on your interest again. Um, and yeah, um, that's about the three streams I want to talk about. Uh, in case if you have any specific questions, I'd be happy to answer. Uh, but yeah, overall, that's how I see um, after you, once you graduate uh, is the thing, yeah. So Devansh, um, I have, I'll shoot the first question. What was it like working in Sabana Jura? Um, so I started off uh, with the industrial planning team. So I did a couple of projects in uh, Malaysia. So that would be primarily be master planning projects. So what you will actually learn in your course over the two years or in your studios primarily, that is something you will be doing as soon as you move. Um, so 
mostly are related to land use planning uh, or policy planning uh, kind of things or implementation plans or concept master plans um so i got the chance to work on a couple of projects in malaysia um africa and kazakhstan um so depending on which company you join and where they are strong as i mentioned um, but all in all it was a good experience i would say um after it was my first working experience so it was quite an eye opener and i really enjoyed my time that's why i uh, actually spent 5 years there <laughs> okay yeah Okay. Um, so at this point in time, we have about fifteen more minutes. So, well, I'd like to open this up to um, the floor. If you have any questions, um, please um, you can just directly speak up, or you could um, signal um, either in the chat box um, and let me know, and I'll call you out. Okay. So we have a few um, questions in the chat. So, so also I'm I'm going to read out the questions and then I'll respond to them, right? So, um, Kaisuke Ozaki says, um, does every applicant have an interview? What should I represent in the portfolio for application? So, um, no, we do not interview all applicants. We do select some applicants for interview, right? So, you not all applicants uh, will go through the interview process. What should I represent in the portfolio for application? Um, you some students may have portfolio, some students may not have portfolio. It depends on your educational background. Um, if you are if you come from an architectural or planning background, then you will probably have a portfolio, and would like to see the kinds of projects that you have done before, um, especially those of a larger scale, right? Um, other than that, if you do not have a portfolio, that is completely fine. And we we are much more interested. We are, then we look out for other things like uh, what kinds of research you have done, what kinds of the, your personal statement, um, so and so forth. We feel that we do not know you well enough because you do not have a portfolio, but you seem to be a very interesting person. Um, then that's why we have an interview with some of you. So um, the second question from Mr. Tony Arwan. Um, prior to this, I joined Integrated Sustainable Design and Urban Design session, and I found that there is a collaborate collaboration between the program, both Integrated Sustainable Design and Urban Design, because it is a cross disciplinary learning. Based on that, number one, is there any collaboration between these programs or other ones, especially in urban planning studios that have been mentioned? Are there any elective courses from ISD and UDP? Um, so point number one, are there collaborations between these two programs? Um, how do I put it? Um, there are no formal collaborations, not the same way as ISD and UD have maybe, but we share um, certain classes, we share certain electives, and sometimes we do share in instructors as well, right? So the, the kind of the flow is quite fluid between these different programs. Um, so but we, all, we are also very aware that you know, um, urban design is not urban planning. You, if you join the urban planning program, it is because you want to be an urban planner. And it's not because you want to be an urban designer. So we are very careful that um, there are very clear um, differences in the expertise between urban planning and urban design. So we do maintain a certain kind of a distinction between the programs. Um, otherwise, you know, why would you want to join this and not that? Are there electives? Um, yes, um, the modules offered by these different graduate degree programs like ISD, UDP, but also architecture, etc. Some of these will be open to students from um, urban planning. So you can take um, these elective modules from other programs. I cannot, at this point in time, say that, guarantee that every module you select, uh, you will enter because sometimes there are entry restrictions, sometimes there are, uh, there are too many students applying and therefore uh, there's a selection process. Um, but for sure, um, the, 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 there are usually modules that are, that are opened um, across um, these different graduate degree programs offered in the Department of Architecture, right? which means urban design, urban planning, ISD, these are all part of the Department of Architecture. And so, the modules that we offer tend to be open to each other. 
Devansh, do you have anything to add about, you know, you remember anything about your elect electives and and your, stu your, your peers who are looking at other programs in UT and ISD? Yeah, so uh, one good thing that we had was uh, actually sharing the studio with the urban design. Uh, so we had actually one of the, th that was the third semester, if I'm not wrong, in the second year first. Uh, so yeah, um, in that you actually have the chance to uh, get the uh, different scale perspective, uh, which was really interesting and get to work in teams with them. Uh, so understanding what urban design scale level could be compared to urban planning level, which is fairly much bigger scale. Uh, so these are your options. Uh, I mean, that was one of the uh, core modules. So I'm not sure, depending on uh, what is the current scenario, probably yeah. I believe you still have that. But also uh, integrated sustainable design. Um, so we did, uh, I also did a course uh, module with them um, so you really get to uh, understand uh, on the green buildings and the kind of sustainable design things that they are talking about um, so you get to work with them as a group as well and then do presentations and do teamwork uh, so you really exchange a lot of uh, different ideas uh, right. which i believe is uh, is a good part yeah okay Thanks, Devansh. So the part about a, a studio that is shared by MUP and MAUD, Urban Design, Urban Planning students, um, there used to be a, this co-shared studio, but I think we have um, separated it. Um, again, you know, we have, we try to make, we try, like I said, we are negotiating between, you know, on the one hand, we want to deal with issues that are very strictly about urban planning. On the other hand, we recognize that, you know, at some point in time, um, urban design, and these other more, these other small scale um, types of issues also enter. So to, to sort of better manage that process, we've decided to separate it. Um, but that doesn't mean that we don't deal with urban design in the studios. Um, at least one of the studios, one of, one of the studios definitely deal with that. And it doesn't mean that you have no opportunity to do with, uh, to interact with urban design students, right? So there are other electives and modules that you will interact with them. So the next question, um, I'm a sophomore student in mainland China, of seven in IELST LTS, which is an English, English uh, language test. Um, I wonder what I can do to be admitted by this program. High GRE score helps the admission. Um, I cannot remember the numbers right now, um, whether it's IELTS or GRE, I believe the website does state a certain kind of a minimum criterion when it comes to language tests, whether it is GRE or IATLS or TOEFL, um, we have stated what the minimum is, right? Um, so if you meet the minimum, um, there's, I mean, you are, you have already cleared one hurdle. But then again, you know, um, scoring a kind of a, scoring your language test is, is important in terms that you have to try to exceed the minimum but that just because you exceed the minimum doesn't automatically mean that you will get into the program because we do look at other things as well but um so i suppose the most direct question answer to your question is yes you should try to um, hit the minimum for your language tests but hitting the minimum for your language tests is not sufficient to enter the program right so as i've said we are looking at a more holistic understanding our own planning and we'll like our students who come in um, to be able to learn all the different dimensions of our planning and engage with each other. Okay, so uh, Luke, how is the course structure? How is the, what's the course structure like? Are all classes conducted in the morning afternoon? Will there be night classes? Um, well, you know, th there are some night classes. So, um, I know at least one module that uh, is about six to nine or something or seven to nine, I'm not very sure. But most modules, especially the studios, are in the mornings and afternoons, right? So most modules are in the mornings and afternoons. Um, there could be one or two night classes. It, that's the way it is because um, we bring a lot of external instructors who are sort of experts in their field. So we, are also, we also have to balance between their timetable and our timetable. So some of these external instructors, um, they have their own 
a company or a job outside and so we have to work uh, with that kind of uh, we have to work around that as well but by and large most modules are in the morning stuff is it safe to go out to attend classes in the night or is it safe in singapore is that what you mean is it safe in singapore to go out at night um i assume that is your question um is it safe to go out to attend classes in the night um uh, uh yeah <laughs> i'm not sure how that's that is a is a straightforward answer yes yeah singapore is pretty safe so before i end you know since i have devanch here um you know just because you know these are all stu uh prospective students they're they're they not just interested in their career etc they're also interested in student life you know, what life is like here in singapore what life is like here studying in singapore so you came from India and, you know, so could you say something about what life was like here in Singapore when you were studying? Um, so, of course, coming from a developing country, it was a different experience coming to a developed country. So first hand, I would say, and there are a lot of uh, different things in that manner, um, in the in the quality of living, uh, as per you can say. Um, secondly, I think was the... Um, experience of um, Singapore being as a one of the primarily uh, most well-planned cities uh, so having a living example uh, of that uh, was really very good um, I'm regularly interacting and having experts from URA or talk about HDB uh, so from the government and the private sector having to give that experience as a living example um and giving feedback on your work was really great apart from that on the personal thing i think um you don't much get time to actually uh during the course itself but of course uh, after the semester is over you do get a lot of time um working i mean just being in the city but I actually made use of it by internships. Uh, so I, I actually went to JTC, which is a Jurong Town Corporation, uh, looks after the industrial development in Singapore. So I worked there as an intern for three months, which really helped me with the job prospects. So I would recommend you all to do that uh, if you get the chance. Um, other than that, no, it's been a very nice city, uh, lots of green spaces park connectors if you love uh, cycling walking running uh, there are numerous activities that you can do all across the island and of course um, if you have the budget and and uh, um, some time um, i would encourage you to take the cheap flights out of singapore to explore the southeast asia as well um, given that covid restrictions are finally um, coming to uh, much uh, lower uh, things. Uh, yeah, um, all in all, uh, it was a good experience. If you have any okay. uh, other questions, uh, I believe you can reach out to me via LinkedIn. Um, you can connect me, Devansh, and I'm happy to answer if you have any other questions. Thanks. Yeah. Thanks, Devansh. Thanks, thanks for your being so generous with your time. Um, you're right. I mean, that's what a lot of uh, expats will say about Singapore. The best thing about Singapore is you can get out of Singapore very easily. <laughs> uh, that's you know, because, you know, it's, it's very easy to visit a lot of the neighboring countries. But anyway, um, so the last question um, before we close, what kinds of quality of students are we looking for? Um, you know, we, 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 when we look at each cohort, we want to make sure that the cohort of students work together and that there's this diversity and energy. Um, and so we are looking for a mix of students. We're looking for students who are enthusiastic, who are active listeners and active learners, um, who are um, open to ideas and open to working with each other. And of course, students who sort of have a clear idea or motivation about why they want to be an urban planner in the first place. Um, so there's a lot of these soft qualities that we are looking out for. Um, and personally, I tend to look favorably on students who demonstrate a certain degree of um, critical thinking, right? Uh, because a lot of the decisions that we make as urban planners will affect thousands and thousands of 
materials lives. And so it's very important to be to think very critically about things, right? To, to ask yourself, you know, why should I, uh, what are the assumptions, you know, uh, um, what kinds of, how are we making our decisions? What kinds of evidence sh should we use? Uh, is certain kind of evidence valid, so on and so forth. So not just taking things at first value, not just sort of um, agreeing with everything you read on the internet, but also have your own independent thoughts about things and being able to ask questions about you know, what are the what should or should not be done as an urban planner. So um so it's we're supposed to end at 640. So on that note, um thank you very much. Um I'll release you guys back to the main room. I believe that's what I'm supposed to do. Thank you. And thank you, Jai uh Devansh. Thank you very much for your time here.